Hey guys, we are back with a very, very popular question that people ask me pretty much every single day on my social media, and that is how to create a portfolio as a freelancer. A lot of people get hung up on this idea that if nobody has purchased their services before, how could they possibly have samples or examples that they can show future clients? So in this video, I'm gonna break down how to curate these samples if no one has paid you, as well as how to present them to clients down the road and which one is the best option Option. Given your current freelancing position, you're definitely gonna wanna bookmark this one, guys. Really quick, don't forget to check out all of my educational resources I have in the comment section of this video. I have books, I have a podcast, I have an online course, everything that will go over this more in depth for you guys if you wanna learn more about portfolio building and all that good stuff. Okay, so we're first going to look at how to get portfolio work in the first place. What the heck do you do? Where do you go? You have two options when it comes to building a portfolio as a brand new freelancer. Your first option is creating what is known as a spec piece. This is doing pretend or made up work for a client that never actually booked you. The idea with the spec piece is that you're creating content that your ideal client would want to see you create for them. So let's say you wanna do travel blogging. You could write a spec blog for Airbnb because you want other travel companies to pick you up as a travel writer for them. Airbnb doesn't have to buy your services. They don't need to reach out to you. You can just simply pretend that they reached out to you and ask for the top 10 places to travel to in 2022 according to Airbnb. You would go through the whole process as if Airbnb was your client. You'd write the blog, put in the hyperlinks, edit it, make sure it looks beautiful, save it in Word document or save it in Google Drive, wherever it is that you want to save it and call it a day. There's no limit to how many different spec pieces you can do in your spare time. I did a big spec piece market for me was pretending that Amazon had bought press releases from me. I wrote quite a few press releases for Amazon even though they never asked for them nor bought bought them. Who knows, maybe I should send them to Amazon and they'll take them. Uh, they're like five years old now at this point though. Your second option for creating freelancing work for your portfolio with no paying clients is to do free work for your friends and family. I can promise you there is someone in your life who needs some free work done and would be more than happy to accept your donated blog or logo or whatever it is that you are going to sell. I can't believe it's free. <laughs> Simply go on your social media and post. Hey guys, I'm starting out as a freelancer. I need work for my portfolio. I'm happy to do it for free in exchange for featuring the work I do for you. Text me, call me, whatever it is, so that we can get started. Again, I can promise you someone in your life needs free work done. And since you're doing it for free for them, they can agree to allow you to show their business name in the work, as I will talk about later. You can't always just go ahead and showcase a company's name unless you have asked their permission to appear in your portfolio. So by asking friends and family right out of the gate, you can let them know that you will be posting their business name and make sure that is okay with them. Since you're doing it for free, they're gonna be okay with it, I can promise you. And there you have it. There's two very effective ways to build up a portfolio with no paying clients. I would recommend doing a combo of half spec pieces, half real pieces that you did for people in your life. Cause as you will see with a portfolio, the more examples you have in it, the stronger it is. On Fiverr, where you're allowed to upload different pieces to your portfolio, I always recommend recommend having at least three samples, but you're better off at having even five to seven samples. Plus doing this free work is really great experience for you, especially before you get out there and have a paying client that's gonna expect some kind of performance from you. I think it's just invaluable experience. Make 20 minutes every day for the next week to get it done. That's a big part of being a freelancer is taking initiative on these things. Okay, now that you have three to five samples of your work, where the heck do you put it? How do you showcase a portfolio that is going to get clients to book your services? Again, broken down into two options here. The first one is on a site like Fiverr, they allow you to upload your portfolio samples within each gig. I'm gonna show you guys a video where I go over this and I show you what my portfolio looks like inside of each Fiverr gig that I currently have opened on my profile. As always, if you wanna go back and check this out on your own time, don't forget to visit my Fiverr profile right here and see how I have presented it inside of each gig. You're definitely allowed to double the samples that you show in each gig. So let's say you have a very similar gig, a brand guide and a logo gig. You can do the same logo sample in both of those gigs. There's no need to reinvent the wheel here. People don't care if you're duplicating it. They just want to see that you can get the work done quickly and seamlessly for them. Other sites like Contra and Upwork have a similar feature where you upload your portfolio work directly into the freelancing site, which means no, you do not need to open your own personal website or download any portfolio software where you're going to present your work. That brings me to your second option, opening your own website where you can present your own work. 
work. This is definitely a long-term game in freelancing and I always recommend that everyone, once you have the time and the money, open your own personal website. It's so smart to do with branding, with marketing, with making money long-term. On your personal website, you can have a tab directly to your portfolio so that way if you are pitching clients off of a freelancing site, you just send them to your website and there's all your beautiful work showcased on a lovely page right on your website. Now you're probably asking, which one should I do first? What's the better option? You guys have heard me say this until I am blue in the face. I recommend you go on freelancing sites your first few years freelancing. It will remediate the need for you to have that personal website and dive super deep into all of the personal branding things that you're going to need to give yourself time to develop. The first one to two years, there's no problem uploading your portfolio to a Fiverr. It's a great option for you and it's a really fast scale that is available to you. After two years, however, once you've gotten a hang of the customer service, the sales, the marketing, everything that is involved with selling on a site like Fiverr, there's no reason why you can't go solicit your own freelancing gigs off of Fiverr. To do that, you're going to need this personal website and it's going to cost a couple hundred dollars, nothing crazy, but I do understand a lot of people first starting out don't even have that to spend on freelancing, which is why these platforms are so amazing. And my last bonus tip is if you are going to add a client's work to your portfolio, you have to ask them if it's okay that the business name is included in your portfolio. A lot of clients are using your freelancing help because they want to claim the work as their own, which means they don't necessarily want to be showcased in your portfolio. You're probably saying, oh my gosh, but I did such an amazing job for this one client. You mean I can't show any of it? You can if you black out every piece of information that refers to the actual client. So you can blur it out, black it out, white it out. Clients understand that when they're looking at your portfolio. If there are blacked out words, they know that means you are just maintaining client confidentiality and it makes you even look more professional to them. So don't worry about it. As always guys, as you advance through your freelancing career, it's a good practice to update your portfolio and include some of your most recent projects since your skill set is undoubtedly going to develop and advance the more you practice. All right guys, I hope I cleared up once and for all how to create a portfolio as a freelancer. I know this is something that really bothers people. So be sure to bookmark this video, share it with your friends, post it to your social media. I really couldn't go over it any more in depth than I just did. By the way guys, if there are any YouTube topics you want me to cover that I am not currently covering, please feel free to comment them under this video or send me an email to contact at alexfasulo.com. I'm taking on more collaborations and partnerships this year and I'm also listening to your feedback and what you guys want to see from me. All right guys, that's it. That's all I got today. Go out there, go crush it, go kill it. Go open your freelancing profile. If anyone's making fun of you or critiquing you, that means they're already below you. Wave them goodbye. You guys got this and I will be back next week. Bye.